Welcome to episode three of Finding the Balance, Rediscovering the Ideal Muslimah. Now, as you know, in this series, we are asking the following questions. Who is the Muslim woman? What are her abiding characteristics? And how can we live up to the standard that has been set for us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in today's day and age? Now, it's no doubt that our deen encourages us to evolve and grow spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, physically, and socially. And all of that for the sake of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. This series is here to help you do just that. But before we continue with this particular episode, I'd like to just give you this short reminder from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So their Lord responded to them, I will never deny any of you, male or female, the reward of your deeds. Both are equal in reward. Those who migrated or were expelled from their homes and were persecuted for my sake and fought and some were martyred, I will certainly forgive their sins and admit them into gardens underneath which rivers flow as a reward from Allah and with Allah is the finest of rewards. And the reason I wanted to remind you of that is that so often we have this perception that the expectations that are placed upon us as Muslim women are different to those of our brothers, that somehow less is expected of us. But this couldn't be further from the truth. And that is why this series is focusing on how we as Muslim women can firstly understand and then achieve those high standards that have been set for all of us as Muslims. And how can we embody characteristics that are seemingly opposite? Well, let's find out because in this episode, we're gonna ask the question, can a Muslim woman be strong and gentle at the same time? Let's do it. So let's kick this conversation off by talking about strength. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the strong believer is more beloved to Allah than the weak believer, but there is goodness in both of them. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu also reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whom do you consider to be a fighter amongst you? And we said, one whom we cannot wrestle down. But the Prophet ﷺ said to them, no, it's not so. Rather, it is one who controls himself when angry. And the reason I wanted to bring these two hadith together is because strength in our deen is seen in a holistic way. A lot of people, when they hear the word strong, they think of physical strength, they think of muscles, they think of you know, all sorts of things, being able to lift heavy weights, etc. But when we look at the strength of a Muslim woman and a Muslim, we're looking at strength of character. We're looking at the strength of Iman. We are looking at qualities like emotional strength and resilience. There is also intellectual strength that is encouraged by the deen and the physical strength and health that we should all be aiming for. So on this point of strength, I would like you to remember my sister that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs you and wants you to be strong to be strong for yourself, to be strong for the deen, to be strong for your family, to be strong for those who need you. So the, the, that quality of strength is something that we should all be looking to embody. Now, of course, in many of our societies, it's seen as a masculine trait to be strong, but I hope that I've been able to give you a little bit of food for thought for how that characteristic of strength actually is something that is praiseworthy in both men and women in varying degrees. But then, if Muslim women are supposed to be strong, can we be gentle as well? Well, Aisha radiallahu anha reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, verily Allah is gentle and he loves gentleness. He rewards for gentleness that which is not granted for harshness and he does not reward anything else like it. Subhanallah. We also have the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ tells us, be cheerful, not threatening, and make things easy, not difficult. So we can see that just as strength is something that is encouraged, strength that is praiseworthy, is, we are encouraged to embody that, 
we are also encouraged to be gentle, gentle in our manners with ourselves and with the people, gentle in our speech and the way that we talk to people, gentle with our loved ones, those who rely on us, those who need us, and gentle with the people in general. This is something that we very often lack in today's society because we are so intent on getting to the next thing, ticking off everything on the to-do list, just getting stuff done, that we forget to be gentle and soft and kind with the people, even our families. So this is something that I would like you, sis, to take some time out and ask yourself, if we are to embody the characteristics of the believing women, of the ideal Muslima, how can we balance these two characteristics within ourselves? That inner strength and that gentleness. Because when the two of them are together in a person, mashallah, amazing things can happen. And may Allah make it easy for all of us to embody those characteristics. But don't go away because the sisters and I are going to be discussing some of the amazing stories from Islamic history in which Muslim women displayed stunning acts of bravery and strength. Trust me, you do not want to miss these. And we are going to be reflecting on the inspiration that we can take from them. So I'll see you then. And we are back with my lovely sisters Um Talha and Sister Anissa to talk more about this issue of the strength of Muslim women. Uh, I've been talking about how to balance strength and being gentle, but again, I have to keep going back to my source material for this series, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, when I read The Ideal Muslimah way back, um, a lot of people get triggered by the book <laughs> nowadays, mm -hmm. but for me, what stood out for me in that book was the stories of the women of the past. Because they were stories I'd never heard. Mm -hmm. I had never heard about Nuseiba. I had never heard about Sophia. I mm -hmm. did not know that Muslim women had played such an active role in the propagation of Islam mm -hmm. from its early days, mm -hmm. right? And I think that there is a perception, even amongst Muslims in general, um, that there are only uh, like one, two, three Muslim women that are worthy of note, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that it's upon us, all of us as Muslims, to be so much more knowledgeable about our history mm. and also be prepared to be inspired by those yeah. those yeah. women uh, for us as women especially and for our daughters i think yes. it's really important um so i wanted to ask you which women from the past you feel inspired you have inspired you on your journey and and why yeah I would say for me, uh, the story of Khadija radiallahu anha really resonated well mm. uh, because she was married to, you know, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and she, you know, financially, emotionally supported him mm. sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And I guess every woman or any woman who has similar kind of lifestyle, they would gravitate towards such role mm. models. Mm -hmm. um, Khadija radiallahu anha was married to, you know, a prophet and uh, alhamdulillah I'm married to you know a student of knowledge so sometime you know like say you know at one episode in our life my husband was working as an imam so when he used to come home he used to just you know ask me like you know what do you think i should talk about in terms of the khutbah mm. so sometime you know i would find myself giving him a certain um suggestion and based on my suggestion he would do the the, the khutbah mashallah. so mashallah you know so sometime you know when we look at these wonderful women in the past there there is a woman that everyone can relate to, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. So for me, it's Khadija radiallahu anha because yes. of my lifestyle, yeah. you know. And also, like, um, like you know, she she was, you know, trying to support her husband behind mm -hmm. the scene, you know. Mm -hmm. And she was instrumental in that, you know, propagation of Islam because we know later on when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi was speaking to Aisha and she said, you know, why do you always think about this old woman? You know, Allah has given you someone better. And yeah. he said, no, Allah mm. hasn't. Because she believed in me when no one believed mm. in me, you know, and, uh, you know, through her I have, you know, children. But one thing that we have to note is that when, when a woman is part of your journey, she makes you the man you are it's very hard to forget the, the contribution mm. of such, you know, women, yeah. you know. So I think Khadija radiallahu anha, often, you know, we like to quote 
her business side of things, but we have to bear in mind most of her contribution was in spreading the deen yeah. with her finance and supporting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and looking after his household. Yeah. So much so that, you know, when the Prophet went away to the cave, you know, pre-prophecy, uh, she would, I mean, climb up yes. the mountain mm. and take him his food and drink. Mm. That takes a lot of dedication as a wife. Mm. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you look in modern time, you know, when the husband comes home, it's like, where's the food? In the microwave or in the oven. In the microwave? It's, but, did somebody say just eat? I think it's more, <laughs> yeah. more like it. But, but think about how she really took care of her household. And that's why we appreciate that narration when the Prophet said to Khadija anha, that Jibil came to me mm. and gives your, uh, gives his salam mm. and salam from Allah and says that you will be given a place where there's no noise. Mm. You know, think about it. Think about it. why no noise? Because maybe Khadija radiallahu she was always around so much, you know, like say, so much going on, yeah. you know, that she was constantly that just wish. at it, you know. Mm, mm, mm. So to, you know, have that, you know, glad tiding, it says something about her life. Yeah. Her life was like full on, full on mm -hmm. supporting a prophet, mm. taking care of lots of children, you know, at a time where Islam was you know, received with hostility, yeah. mm. you know, yeah. this boycott that she mm. suffered, mm. as a result, mm. she passed away. Mm. So subhanAllah, her, her life really, you know, shows us the, the, the role model of, of being a woman, being a wife, being a mother. And being mm -hmm. strong. And being mm -hmm. strong. You know? That is because that's not what we typically nowadays yeah. associate with strength. You know, yeah. strength is somebody, you know, yeah. uh, and she swinging was swords, etc., which yeah. is also strength. Yeah. But one of the things that we discussed earlier on in the episode was the idea that strength doesn't just look one way. There's yeah. different kinds of strength. Yeah. Yes. What about you? I mean, I think, you know, I love what you, the fact that you said that, you know, in terms of studying lots of different women, mm -hmm. because as women, like you said, we are mothers, we are wives, we are, you know, teachers, we are really the nurturers of society. Mm -hmm. And we have so many different roles. Mm -hmm. I was going to say hats, but I would say hijabs, but <laughs> we have so many different roles. And when you go through life, you know, it's good to kind of pull a different woman mm -hmm. and her strengths mm -hmm. along that way. Mm -hmm. So it may be that you are feeling, you know, physically weak and then you look to Nusaiba, you know, and you think, mm -hmm. wow, could I, you know, and I do, you know, could I pick up that sword and could I defend the Prophet? But let's talk about Nusaiba for a minute because there yeah, could yeah. be viewers who don't even know who you're talking mm -hmm. about. Tell us a little bit about so, Nusaiba's story. Subhanallah, I was so blessed to have gone on Umrah mm -hmm. and gone to the uh, position where she was a woman who, mashallah tabaraka, defended the Prophet, um, you know, and took physically, you know, physically yeah. and, and took blows, you know, yeah. like, subhanallah, you know, and think about the swords. It's not just like a little whip. Have I you mean, tried to lift a sword yes, before? Yes, and they are so heavy. Love I don't, you know, so when you're, when you're thinking about, you know, that role, defending the Prophet mm -hmm. Sallallahu so that he could be um, pushed away and, and, and looked after in the cave, yeah. you know, and she took those blows for him, yeah. you know, and, you know, that, that story is so phenomenal. And if the viewers don't know, they should look it yeah. up and connect yeah. with it more. Yeah. But the physical strength that she had, and not just physical strength, but the bravery, yeah. the courageousness. That's, that's you know, a strong heart. That, like that is. Physical strength, because you that's know a manifestation of what's in yeah. your heart, for you sure. You know you're going to die there, but you have that trust in Allah. That's Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You know, that makes me think of the story of uh, Sumayya, uh, mm. you know, mm. radiallahu anha, the first martyr in Islam. Mm. Yeah. And again, if the viewers haven't heard, then definitely somebody to look up. But, you know, it's mentioned in the sources that obviously she was tortured horrifically yeah. her and her son on the the hot you know the, the hot sand you know uh being being really tortured in a way that we don't really want to describe on tv yeah, um you know and never taking it back mm. the la ilaha illallah mm. the shahada mm. refusing to take it back mm. and actually it says in the sources that you know they were allowed to take it back they were allowed mm. to lie mm. but there are no records of her or any other women t basically taking back their shahada, mm -hmm. that they stood firm with that. So subhanAllah, like you said, it's that, that physical strength, obviously, mm -hmm. but the physical strength is coming from a strong heart, mm -hmm. from a yes. strong iman, subhanAllah. Definitely. And even like subhanAllah, when we go back to Khadija radiallahu anha, she stood by her husband mm -hmm. because she saw that to be truth. And she was the first woman to believe in that truth. Yeah. And whatever came in that package of truth, she was willing to 
you know, take yeah, it and yeah. sacrifice and just, you know, s hold on strong, subhanAllah. Can you imagine, you know, going through the, you know, year of boycott and, you know, not having much provision, you know, subhanAllah, how it must have been, mm -hmm. but still. And after living the life that she lived before. Exactly. That's another exactly. thing as well. Like mm. after living the life that she lived before mm. and enjoying the wealth, enjoying the high status, mm. enjoying, you know, the, the sense of belonging yeah. and the privilege that comes mm -hmm. with being of Quraysh, etc. Yeah. Mm. And, and then this being mm. your reality. Mm. A lot of us, how many of us, if we're honest, how many of us would be okay with yeah. that? Yeah. You know, well, well, I actually personally draw my strength from Hajar, may Allah be pleased with her, be because with I her. think, you know, out of all the women in terms of strength, I mean, to be left in the middle of the desert with her baby and her husband walking away and him not even being able to tell her what's going on. Yeah. And, her, you know, yes, yeah, subhanAllah, you know, literally without no people, with a new baby, yeah. baby and just little provisions and then those provisions running out mm -hmm. and the fact that she didn't just sit down and just you know and, and pity and cry herself there's no you know. reports of her doing any of that no you know crying but, sitting down yeah. you know tearing her hair Savannah, out she yeah. was action action yes. action and, and it, sorry can i just say to yes. jump in because if you've done sa'i yes you know the difference yes. between but you exactly. know the distance between yeah. safa and marwa yes. it's it's not yeah. around the corner yeah. it's on the other end yeah and exactly. she did that seven times yes yeah. who knows what she was looking for and exactly. what she thought she was going yeah. to find doing yeah. that journey and, and the fact that you know from that you know our hajj our pilgrimage comes from her walk yeah. and then the blessed zamzam and i mean we can talk about yeah. that whole experience but as a woman Allah her Allah. strength yeah. Subhanallah. And, and proactivity as well, because yes. she wasn't just thinking, okay, I'm, I, this is it, you know? Yes. Yeah. But she got up and took the matters into yes. her own yeah. hand by the will of Allah. Yes. And not once, seven times. So yeah. it's not like, oh, you, you tried she once. She looked, and then she you didn't go, find anything, and she came back, back and she was like, okay, and that's twice. it. Oh, yeah. Seven times. But one thing also highlights is that, you know, Subhanallah, you know, when she said to Ibrahim alayhi salam that, you know, is this a command from Allah? Mm. And then yeah. he obviously kept quiet, and then she said, then. Allah's not going to abandon us. Yes. And subhanAllah, I was thinking as a mother with a baby, you know, uh, when you leave your baby unattended, you feel a bit of anxiety. Yeah. There was no one to mm. look after the baby, but irrespective of that, she still left the baby unattended mm. in a foreign barren land and she was going up and down. And subhanAllah, that shows us that her level of tawakkul was mm. very yes. strong because she knew that, okay, this is the command of Allah. Allah's not going to you know, uh, abandon me. Yes. I just need to do what I need to do. Yes. And that's the thing, you know, if we all did what we are supposed to do, like meaning take action, yeah. not inaction, then you will see how Allah will t open the doors, you know. And starting off with du'as first. Yeah. And having, you know, so you have your intention, but you make your du'as. You know, you have that certainty, like you said, that, that tawakkul, that Allah is going to do something, but you don't just sit there, like yeah. you said. Yeah. You do something about it. Yeah. And then it's sabr, isn't it? Yeah. It's having that sabr. Mm -hmm. And I think all, all, all the women, when we look into their lives, one thing that it really jumps out is their, their level of uh, faith and how they accepted mm -hmm. the decree that Allah, you know, gave. It's like the package of faith, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, this is what, it, and I think, and I think, the, when you see the women from the past, you can, you can see that they understood the deal on the table. Mm -hmm. If you accept this, mm -hmm. this yeah. is what it comes with, yeah. right? The hardship, the I boycotting, the challenges, you know, the difficulty, the loss. Yes. How many women do we know whose husbands did not embrace Islam? Yeah. And then they had to, you know, to be separated from them. You know, people whose children didn't accept Islam. Yes. You know, people who made hijrah leaving yes. entire families, entire, yeah. you know, you know, families, wealth, name, yeah. status, everything for the sake of this truth. Subhanallah. And I just can't help thinking that we as Muslims, we've lost that. We've lost that understanding that will you be left to say, do we think that we will be left to say that we believe and not be tested? Yeah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, mm. we've already we tested those who were before you. Yeah. And those women understood that. They got mm. it. And also, subhanAllah, you know, the same surah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions that right towards the end, you know, in surah Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُ فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ that those who strive towards our path mm -hmm. with their faith, yeah. 
you know we will give them a you know we will guide them upon that path mm. and then allah says you know and we are with those who are doing the good deeds the mm. doers of good deeds mm. you know so here here's the thing you know if you submit to allah if you have faith and you you strive with whatever you have mm. in your like you know as i mean you strive like hajar alayhi salam khadija radiyallahu anha nusayba radiyallahu anha you strive as long as that mujahada is there mm. allah sees that everyone's level of mujahada is different yeah. some have to strive with their sword some have to strive with yes. their patience some have that. to strive with their tawakkul yeah. whatever that striving is yeah. so as long as you do that then know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will guide you upon that path of faith and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says wa inna allah la ma'al muhsinin allah mm. is with those who are doing the good you know subhanallah if you have the companionship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then what do we have to worry yeah. but we have to do our part and that yeah. is the striving yeah. like hajar alayhi salam khadija radiyallahu Allah yeah. anha nusayba yep yeah, yeah. there's no examples of people any people from the past who you know accepted faith went through trials and just sat with it yeah exactly. so even though sometimes we have this idea that you know patience is sitting with it patience is being quiet patience is just accepting you know whatever is coming your way mm -hmm. i like the way that you, you juxtapose you know the patience with the tawakkul yeah. and the action yeah. yes. right yeah. yeah patience doesn't mean inaction yes, yes. patience exactly. means that you are you know uh, being uh, like you know um, what's that word you're waiting for things to unfold but in that period of waiting mm. you're doing your bit as well yes mm. you know that's yeah. what patience is you know yeah. that you're not complaining but rather you are going with emotion and you are going to see what's going to come your way but you will do your bit i love that and subhanallah to see that strength there's different types of strengths embodied in all these different figures from our past as muslim women so inspiring and so motivating and may allah make it easy for us to learn more about those women so what about you sis what have you taken from our discussion so far and from the episode so far we hope that you are inspired to find out more about the women from islam's glorious past please do share your takeaways on social media and make sure that you tag iman channel and me naima b robert for now it's time to go to my parting thoughts Let's do it. This is a reminder to you, my sister. As believing women, we are strong. We are brave, we are resourceful, daring and will give our lives for the ones we love. And we always have done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fashioned us that way. Our strength, whether it was in the fields, by the fire, on the birthing stool or even in the battlefield was used to nurture, preserve and protect life. Our innate strength is a force that scales mountains, crosses deserts, faces starvation, all for the sake of a hungry child at the doors of death. Now, if in some cultures women are thought of as weak, it is a result of our cultural conditioning, not a reflection of our potential or our nature. Learning about the fortitude of Maryam alayhi salam is proof of that. Pharaoh's wife Asiya, Musa's mother Hajar, these are all proof of that. Khadija, Aisha, Asma, Umm Salama and the countless other Muslim women, may Allah be pleased with them, are all proof of that. The mothers, the resistors, the survivors in Palestine, Afghanistan, Syria are all proof of that. And we are proof of that. Every one of you right now is showing up with strength and courage every day every hour every minute and yet by the grace of Allah we are unbroken still we smile still we love still we give even when it appears that we have nothing left to give this is a part of the gift of being a woman a believing woman may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with humility confidence and strength so that we may follow in the footsteps of the righteous who came before us fulfill the roles he has given us and be an example to those who come after us amen i'll see you in the next episode inshallah